beginning of this VOD. Um, welcome, everyone. Welcome, BarkBit. Welcome, Cobrian. Curtis, sounds good, man. Um, it's Coco time. It's Septandy. Uh, as Septandy comes to a close, I can't think of any better way than um, than to do a uh, Coco 3 stream on real hardware through Glorious RGB for the first time. Thanks to the one and only Rob Inman, who uh, graciously donated uh, a device called a Switcheroo. And uh, if you're unfamiliar with what the Switcheroo does, uh, let me show you real quick. So this is a rundown of my setup. We've got the, the Coco 3, of course, here. The deluxe joystick. And then over here, we have coming out of the RGB port on the bottom of the Coco 3, um, feeds into a SCART converter, and the SCART converter has a switch on the top. Uh, I don't know how well you can see that, but it actually, you got the, it's the, the, what, the what's called the switcheroo. Uh, you can switch between RGB and composite modes. Uh, and this is running into a scan, or a SCART to HDMI converter, and then that is running into Aaron's uh, HDMI capture card that he let me borrow. We have an Elgato HD60 that was donated to us by the one and only Roshi, but it is not working with uh, with either my computer or Aaron's computer. So, um, and we think that it has to do with a, a recent Windows update that has made this not work. So uh, that is, that's what's going on, but this looks really good. So uh, I'm happy with this. Um, so yeah, hey Pix, how's it going, man? I should probably make that chat a little bit bigger. It seems to be very small. Let's see. Um, what if we made the width? Actually, maybe we can just do that. There we go. That seems reasonable. All right. So, hey, Nick. You ready for some cocoa time? We're going to start things off with a, uh, you know, uh, a good RGB title, the old Donkey Kong remix. Let's try this thing out. Now you know my thoughts on Donkey King. Hot, hot garbage. No, I'm just kidding. It's not hot, hot garbage, but it's nowhere near the ultimate DK port when it comes to uh, you know the other heavy hitters like the NES or like the uh, the Atari 8. But don't give me the girder count. I'm done with the girder count. Give me the speed, the raw speed. So, man, this looks good right off the bat, huh? Remix levels and new gameplay twists. I like the sound of that. All right, let's do it. So, lots of options here. Um, I wonder how many lives we can give ourselves. Okay, up to nine. We'll take all nine. Level order. Display mode, sound, start game. All right, I think we're ready to go. Oh yeah. Now this is, is this a, is this another transcode that's been changed or is this an actual port? Oh no, the chat has overlapped the video. All right, I gotta move out of the way. I'll fix that in just a second. It's both a mod and a transcode, okay. I play fast and loose with Donkey Kong. Oh no. Try again here. Oh, I don't know if I'll be able to get to the remixed uh, <laughs> levels. The uh, you know I'm I'm not a great hand at Donkey Kong to begin with, and the deluxe joystick, while it is a great stick, it definitely is not. It's not the number one choice of Donkey Kong players everywhere. Oh, 
Oh, jeez. I could have done it that time and I messed up. All right, I'll try this again. You pick classic versus... See, this one said this one said remix A. Oh, I, I've got one, Nick. I've got one. But I resolved myself that whenever I'm playing on real hardware, I got to go for the ultimate authentic experience. Okay, you talked me into RGB. Um, you talked me into the Coco 3. You talked me into the Deluxe Joystick. I can't go backwards. Using an Atari stick would be a step backwards away from authentic uh, fun. Is it really? Do you think it's period correct? I thought that those were a newer innovation. Oh, jeez. I'm in a world of hurt now. You know me, Aaron. I've always loved RGB. I've always been a fan of playing classic systems on flat screens. CRTs are no good. Look at my awesomeness, by the way, Aaron. Look how well I'm doing at Donkey Kong. I'm rocking and rolling. 2,200 points. I'm only 5,000 points away from the high score. No! No! Climb the ladder! Climb the ladder! All right, next up, we've got to take a look at Digger 3, the new batch, as it's known. So, straight out of Australia, we got Dig, we got Dig MF, that's the Prince version. We got Digger, we got Digger 3P, and we got Dino Run. Oh yeah, thanks, Pix. I will fix the chat. Um... I keep trying to use the yeah man hey Aaron your um your card is the bee's knees man it is the bee's knees um let's see here if I go into chat then I limit the width to 800 we should be okay okay let's see how let's see how well this does and see if it still overlaps uh, all of my Coco stuff, uh, Nick, I get from the Coco Archive um, uh, build of um, of uh, the SDC Explorer. So we want D3 RGB. So you're saying that, okay, well, here's the deal. I, I guess I don't have that on my thing. Um, I've got Digger 3 Composite. It's probably not what we want. Uh, I wonder what would happen if we ran Digger 3 Composite through RGB. That doesn't look so bad. Let's switch over to Composite. Oh my gosh, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Now, you know, if you're playing on, um, if you're playing on, uh, you know, a CRT, this wouldn't look so bad. But if you're playing this on like a, a flat screen, you really see how awful composite looks. So, um, yeah, yeah. All right, so we won't do that.
yeah let's just let's just look at the preview let's switch back over to glorious man the switcheroo is great huh sorry you see that um that's my uh scan convert or my uh my adapter there that's giving you that overlay Yeah, I'll, I'll hit that on the next stream, Nick. Um, we'll just do the preview for right now, uh, just so we can see. We can just see how the... Uh, I, I, I guarantee you I wouldn't be able to get very far in this anyway. Okay. J. The basic. Oh. See, I like this better than the real version because it you don't have the stupid, like, you died screen. I think that's a real horrible idea. Uh, to You know, that's like something straight out of Shadow of the Beast where it's like you have, a, the, you know, your, your game over screen is more graphically impressive than the actual game. And I mean, it's one of those things that it's really cool the first time, but the 80 second time, it's not so cool. Oh, geez, this thing is running fast and furious. Yeah, I mean, I'm not telling the guy how to make a game, or, but I, I sort of am telling him how to make a good game. How you make a good game is you take out that game over screen, and then you've got a good game. Because this game rules, it's really good. Oh no, oh no. I'm so glad that you can run faster than your opponents. That is a that's a true saving grace. Get up there, get up off of that thing. All right, come on, there we go. Almost done. I put this thing to bed. Dig. Oh no! Oh no! Oh. oh my gosh. I was doing so well. Extra sounds with the M key. Oh yeah, there's the extra sounds. Yeah, sound design in this game is excellent. Very good. Oh. <laughs> I like that. It's a shame. I'll take I'll take extra sounds over additional levels any day because I'm I'm what you could call a, a not good video gamer, and uh, I, w I would probably never see those extra levels. This guy's got to be toast. Yeah. All right, come back. There we go. Oh, that's interesting, Curtis. No. Nope. Last life. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? All right. So yeah, Digger. Very cool. This is a, you know, and, and the next time I stream, I will have the uh, the full version on there. Although, like I said, I, the, the chances of me getting beyond the preview level is low, very low. All right.
I have not tried the Pac-Man transcode. Why don't we give that a go next, Nick? Is it Pac-Tac? It's just called Pac-Man. There we go. What's up with these loading times, huh? How does that work? You know, what, are, what what's being loaded at this point? I thought the uh, the idea of the um, the SD card was to make everything instantaneous, all decompressing. Okay. That makes sense. All right, let's see how this thing goes. Pac-Man is ultimately, you know, oh, I was going to go on a huge rant, or not rant, but I was going to wax poetic about the uh, track screen for Pac-Man. Unfortunately, we don't see that here. Okay. Everything looks pretty. What is this extended scroll? What does that mean? Oh, it's definitely a K. Yeah. Yeah, that's unlike the pronunciation of GIF, uh, the K is definitely the correct uh, parlance for uh, a floppy. Yeah. They're screen scrolling. And, and so what does extended scroll do? Not sure. Okay. Well, we'll find out. We will turn it on. How do I start the game here? One or two starts a game. Okay, five. Okay, I'm looking space to start. Does it say, there we go, space to play. Okay, and now we've got the um the attract screen here okay it's a shame that you can't put the the coco in tate mode Yeah, the scroll on this isn't so bad. Um, it's definitely better than the, the Genesis. I need to turn down my game volume some. Well, I don't even know how you turn down the volume on this monitor. Yeah, I think that's probably a better way to, to do it, but of course with the transcode maybe there is a... Now can I, how do I get back to the main menu? Do you remember? Is it escape? Nope. Um, how I get back to that option screen? Is there a way to do it? Oh, and they, the chat still is not right. Um... Try that. 
Okay. Well, that's all right. We'll just we'll just restart. We'll try it without the without the extended screen or scrolling. So what's your guys' favorite of the of the transcodes? Are there only two? I know that you said the Defender is in development, but uh, are there any other ones besides uh, Donkey Kong and Pac-Man? Okay, cool. The, uh, the chat is not... Oh, the chat has disappeared. Um, I don't know why you can't see it on the screen anymore, but that's just the way it goes. Okay, that's good to know, Curtis. Okay, so we're going to turn extended scroll off. And try this again here. Yeah, that's, that's true, Pix. I fixed the problem. You're welcome. I honestly, I mean, like when I open up the properties... Um, oh, it's maybe because of the height. Let's try that. That should work. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. Let's give this one more shot. I'm a better hand at Pac-Man than I am Donkey Kong. Let's see if I can at least beat the first board. Did you guys ever learn any of the patterns on this game? I had a book that I got from the library um, once that had the patterns in there. And, uh, but they didn't work for the the, uh, the Atari 8-bit version, which was the only version I had, of course. Yeah, harder than the arcade. That is that is definitely not going to be for me. It's like Donkey Kong 2. Sort of weird how the screen redraws that way. Um, it's kind of interesting how it sort of like blurs in and then shifts a little bit to the left. All right. I'm having a little bit of issue with the uh, the good old deluxe joystick here. All right. I may need to adjust my X and Y axes a bit. As you know, Pac-Man is a game where cornering is very important. Oh, Curtis, I can't remember if you you responded to Nick or not. Back in the day, were Atari 8-bit or you know 2600 joystick adapters widely available for the Coco? Or was that only, you know, recently when the, you know, the crest of Coco fandom is sort of, you know, washed over us all and we're getting more products than ever before? has more background music than Lords of Chaos. All right. Well, we didn't get to see the first intermission, but I'm sure you've seen it before. So, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Oh, I do trust you, Nick, but you're a young dude. You, uh, you, you were not there back in the day like Curtis was. You weren't on the ground floor walking around Coco Fest 86, taking in the sights and the sounds. What? 
Nick, I, what? That's crazy. I thought you were like 22. That's insane. You look young. You've got a young looking face, Nick. I'll tell you that. All right. Photon is coming up next. This is, this is a game that I enjoyed playing last week. Uh, or last stream. Yeah, you need to send me some of that stuff, man. I could have sworn that you were just a, a young pup, fresh to the cocoa scene. All right, Photon. Where does that come here? We'll see. We'll see how I do. <laughs> it's like Aaron thinking that uh, that uh, the the Pixel Gaiden guys were younger than um, were younger than us. And Eric's the same age as Aaron, and Cody's the same age as I am. So that's pretty funny. Sundog. All right. I can't exactly recall. Two power bars remaining. Aaron, have you played this one before? Photon? Mmm. I remember this music. Okay. I may or may not actually remember how to play this game. I don't remember how to pull. I also don't have the whole... This is like a widescreen. This is like... The, the Coco is like the Amiga. Where games run at different resolutions. And so sometimes you've got to... Expand things just a tad. Walk towards, but one space away to pull in front of you when you hit the button. Okay. Oh, I see, because I've got... Uh, yeah. die if that ball hits you, right? So you want to avoid the ball. We'll just send it out that way. Alright, that didn't go quite as well as I thought it would. There we go. Ha ha! Ha ha! Look at this guy. You got a, a real bad guy and stuff too. Okay. This is a really interesting concept for a game, I, I must say, Curtis. Uh, this is this is a real. I wonder if this. Do you know if this got ported to anything else? Yeah, I mean, it's one of these games... I like puzzle games 
when they give you some time to think. Uh, we played a game called Deflector for the ZX Spectrum, and it was sort of like this, but it, the, 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 the way that the timer worked, it, it didn't give you enough time to really puzzle things out, and I need that because I'm dumb. All right, check this out. I'm gonna pull a trick on Green he's never seen before in his life. Mmm! Okay, I should have enough lead time to get in there. Oh yeah. Oh, the real danger begins. I don't like the sound of that. Holy cow. I think these are different tunes for each level too, right Curtis? Oh! Oh. Oh, so you've got energy here. It's not a one-hit kill, which is also something that's good. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is just push this out and up. And that'll block uh, pain. Oh my gosh, no! Run away! Okay. Pull that out. Oh no, green. Okay. okay. Push that over there. Is there um so this was this was a disc only game, right? This wasn't a cart, or was it a cart? Let me work from the other side here a little bit. Yeah, but this is very forgiving. You know, obviously that we're in an early level, but I like the fact that you can you can really take a lot of hits here, and uh, and still be okay. Yeah. Yeah. If I really sat down and, and like thought about this majorly. I would do really well. Um, however, I uh, it's difficult for me to think about what's going on in the chat <laughs> and really plan out my moves because I'm one of these, I, I'm a high concentration individual. I've got to give something my full attention to uh, to really look at this. I've, I've I've moved it exactly back where it was. Come on. See if we can get this thing over here. One more. Oh, I can't I can't squeeze in between those. Oh my gosh. I'd really like to watch somebody who's, you know, competent at this play it. Level 20. That's amazing, Curtis. All right. Yeah, very cool idea for a game, and it does look great in RGB, for sure. 
Okay, let's see what else is on the list here. So there are there any racing games in RGB, guys? Grand Prix Challenge. All right. Let's give it a shot. This is an all RGB screen. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, is it Grant? Is it which one of these is it? This okay, so we'll just do that. Okay. Okay, cool. Written by Dave Dice. Okay, well this looks good. Looks like a Coco 3 game. Okay. How might one move in this game? I'm pushing up. I think maybe the game might have... Oh, yeah. That's right. I feel like this is some kind of personal best for me. This is the longest I've ever been without having to change joysticks. I mean, we got through three games. That's pretty incredible. Oh. I have to look behind here. Guys, if you're looking for something to get me for Christmas, that automatic joystick switcher thing, that sounds pretty good. It sounds really good. All right. So, here we go. Let's get it on. I feel like something might have gone wrong because shouldn't the computer be moving like before I start moving? I definitely changed it to the other port. Hey, Just. Um, I'm hitting all the buttons. Oh, there it was. I hit something. And we're off. Okay, my joystick is definitely pulling. I got so intense in my Donkey Kong play that things might have gone awry here. Yeah, maybe this is the, maybe this is the wrong port. Okay. Oh yeah. Now we're in business. It's time to win this thing. This is... I wouldn't call this the easiest game that I've ever controlled. Was this a commercially released game? Yeah, you're right. You're right, Curtis. Because, I mean, it's a clone of, uh, of Super Sprint, for sure. All right, one more lap. Then we'll take our money and upgrade our car. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, my gosh. I was doing so well. 
You almost have to just like aim, aim and forward, aim and forward. Come on, come on. There we go. What? How many laps am I supposed to? Oh, I'm, I'm only on lap three? All right. There we go. And up. I'm I'm getting better at collecting the wrenches. I'm not getting better at avoiding that oil slick. You know what I would love to see? I've never looked for this and I don't think that it exists. Are you guys familiar with the game Action Biker for the uh for the 8-bit computers? I would love to see a Coco port of Action Biker. That would be a great game for the Coco. All right. Now, is the track going to change? Are there multiple tracks here? Okay. Increase uh, score, increase speed. Definitely probably want increase acceleration. Okay. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. A little bit of that, and coming down. Jeez, oh, I, I had victory within my grasp. Um, it's very. There we go. You won't lap me. You might lap me. Okay, we're done with this. Still, though, good to know that there was at least one racing game for R RGB Cocos. All right, how about a shoot? Oh, yeah, let's do a Xenix. Let's do Xenix. Picard, or, uh, uh, Curtis, I knew you'd, you'd never s steer me wrong. Inglorious RGB. I remember playing this on the Coco Show and just being blown away by its awesomeness. Oh, something tells me that I'm in the wrong port. Luckily, just like Galaga, if you just hang out on the right side of the screen, not too much can happen to you. Yeah, this is great. I've got a slight tilt going on. There we go. I love the fact that you can zero these deluxe joysticks in, you know, like if you're starting to drift a little bit, you just adjust a little something and then boom, it's fixed. So much better than the joystick or the Joy-Con drift that people are experiencing now on the Switch. Do you remember the first time you saw this, Aaron? Was it when we did it on the show? Had you seen this before we did it on the Coco Show? Oh, jeez. This game definitely needs auto fire. <laughs> I'm doing pretty great. I'm sort of a master at this game.
I will say that this is the the deluxe joystick is much better for shooters like this than the uh, the Epix XJ500 or the Ergo. Um, you play any game that requires a lot of rapid fire, and your 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 index finger cramps up immediately with those sticks. Uh, this thing you can you can play it like an art you know the deluxe joystick. You just you, you basically you hold it like an arcade joystick. The button isn't quite as comfy. What I really need to do for a game like this is bring out my monster joystick and attach it to the uh, the can the uh, the adapter the, the Atari joystick adapter. We may do a special Coco uh, shooter stream where we do Crystal City and uh, in this game and, and I see how well I can do with that monster stick because that monster joystick was built for games like this. Oh, okay, so this is a power up. Ah. Oh, this guy's tricky. There we go. Oh, that makes sense, Curtis. That makes sense. The uh, Starfield effect is very impressive. It's, you know, a lot like Galaga. It's sort of the 3D effect. I'm so happy that this is working out. I owe everything to Aaron. If I hadn't gone over to his house uh, to get his uh, his capture card, the stream never would have happened because that Elgato was just driving me up the wall. It was just and, and and I didn't know if it was something I was doing because it normally is, or if it was a, a different sort of thing. Yeah, so I'm missing a lot of these power ups because I'm just shooting too quickly. Now I'm just missing everything. Okay, so that's that was the bonus round. Move my whole shebang back just a little bit so I can get that toy stick there. Ah, I'm missing power ups left and right, and I keep shooting them. Don't shoot the food. Do you know the uh, etymology of the, the the word Xenix? Why he used uh, that name? Did he just think it sounded cool? All right, we'll try we'll try Gauntlet. That'll probably be our last game of the the evening. But this will definitely not be the last Coco stream. Now that I've got the RGB set up, I've got the capture card set up, and what's great is that aside from just moving the Coco onto the desk. Everything else can stay here because I've got everything else just kind of set up behind my computer, and so uh, it's it's it'll be nice. Uh, Duncan, are you in the chat right now? Has Duncan been here this whole time? Has he been here any of the time? Uh, let's see. He is uh, he is not here with us. Anyway, Duncan, uh, both Duncan and Roshi both got me an RGB to SCART converter that I can use with the Spectrum Plus Two. <coughs> Forgot about the cough button again. I need to gaze upon it with loving eyes. All right. Xenix. Cool game. Now let's do some Gantlet. Right. I've got uh, I've got SCART from the uh, Amiga. SCART from the uh, um, Coco. And SCART from the... Uh, the specky, so I'm all scarred up and no place to go. Okay, so which one of these is it, uh, Curtis? Where's it on down the line? There's Gantlet. Oh, okay. I'm guessing because of the lag, you just meant this one. <clears throat> I 
Oh, yeah. Looks pretty good. I don't know about that uh, warrior. Okay, RGB, of course. Oh, there's a two-button joystick option. Insert the board disc and press any key. So I need to, uh, yeah, do the old shift multi-disc game thing. So we'll, we'll take care of that. So it's not that one. Okay. So we will we will select the correct one. Okay. So boom. Or did I need to hit I needed to hit shift in before then? Alright, who should I be? The elf, the warrior, the wizard, or the Valkyrie? It was news to me that these characters actually had their own, aside from different looking weapons, that they actually played differently. I want to know your favorites. I want to I want to vote on it in the chat. Which one? The first person to give me a suggestion I will go with. <clears throat> elf it is, Mitsuyama. I always like the elf. Okay, movement control. We we want right joystick. Hold on just a second. Hello? Hello. Can I join the chat? Nope. Totally spam. Okay. So Boy, the, uh, wasn't the elf green? Or was that just in Gauntlet 1? I'm going to saunter on down past those guys. Or maybe that's how they avoided copyright dispute, aside from calling it Gantlet. That big piece of meat. Give me some of that. Oh, and this is eight directions, too. Oh, you're right, Mitsuyama. You are right. I'd forgotten. Yeah, very colorful. like the awesome way of fighting just reversing all the time awesome the Amiga game not really an awesome way of fighting Dave Dice also did the uh, the um, he did the sprint game didn't he yeah the Coco is the true hidden gem of the American computing scene for sure. So this was a Coco 3 exclusive. Would this not run on any of the other Cocos? Now things are getting hairy. some treasure I guess that makes sense
When do you consider the last uh, major Coco Fest to be before it really transitioned into like a hobbyist, you know, get together, Curtis? I'm sure that it was a gradual transition, but when do you think the last like truly great Coco Fest with it or with a real commercial industry presence was? What year? Must have missed a key. Not long for this world. I need food badly. You really think that there was still like a la large commercial presence in the late 90s? Like past like the, the downfall of the Amiga and all that stuff? That's interesting. I would not have expected that. Um... Well, I mean, like, okay, like, you know, Coco Fest in, say, like, 1986, you know, you you probably, okay, okay, let me say it like this, let me say it like this, like, the amount of vendor, the, the ratio of vendors to attendees, I guess, when was it at its highest? Okay, so that makes sense, so yeah, 20 plus vendors, okay. Now, how many vendors were there in the heyday, would you say? Forty to fifty. Okay, so even when things you know got you know bad, it wasn't so bad. Yeah, there was. I'm sure that the scale of the companies themselves was was probably different, but still, yeah. Um, hopefully, one of these years, Aaron and I will will make it over for a Coco Fest. I think it would be. You know, I'm I'm so much more pumped for it now that I'm a Coco owner, and I've had more time to to sit down with the actual hardware. It's made me much more excited about going to going to stuff like that, and uh, looks like this might be a good time to. Uh, um, yeah, it's only eight only eight hours. <laughs> um, looks like this might be a good time to start stop the stream because my my internet connection just went a little wonky on me, and hopefully that's not um, a sign of things to come. But anyway, we're going to wrap things up here for the Coco stream. Again, one more big thanks to Rob Inman uh, for uh, giving me the switcheroo and all of the accoutrement with it. Uh, thank you to Aaron for letting me use his HDMI capture card. And thank you to Curtis for suggesting so many good games. Thank you to everybody that's hanging out with me in the chat. Say a quick hello to you right now. We got uh, Pix. Thank you, as always, for being here and modding. Uh, 3D Code Warrior, Aaron, uh, Chet Simpson, Jost80, Curtis, Marco555, Micromagic, Mr. Mooncat, Picard2010, and Z9K9. Thank you guys for being here for the stream. And uh, I will be back. Uh, I'd, I'm hoping to do an Atari stream uh, at some point during the week this week. So some 1200XL action. So uh, be on the lookout for that if that uh, excites you. I will see you next time. Adios.